Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And this is my favorite time, or should I say, one of my favorite times of the week, uh, an opportunity to come and to, to invite you to meet me tonight as we seek the face of the God of the Bible and hear from him. I said one of the times because, uh, uh, listen, nothing is as great as the, uh, the actual engagement of preaching and teaching and hearing the word of the Lord and then get, I get the opportunity to invite you to join me. And I want to thank you for the way that you tune in because you know, as never before. We need to hear God's word and God's truth because you got to admit this world is upside down. Things are topsy turvy. Evil is being called good. Good is being called evil. Right now is considered to be wrong and wrong is considered to be right. Listen, people are being, people who are pro abortion literally call people who try to save unborn babies extreme on abortion. Now, to me, that's one of uh, the weirdest things I've ever seen, because how can you be for the slaughter of the unborn and yet find a way to call someone, to, to accuse someone who is trying to save an unborn baby you, you accuse that person of being extreme. But I have a question for you that I've asked before. I've asked it in a sermon. No one has answered me yet. What is more extreme than snuffing out a life? What is more extreme? Can you go beyond taking a human life? Can you? According to the scriptures, you can't. The Bible says, fear not man who can destroy the body. And after that, there is no more he can do, but fear him who can destroy the body and cast the soul into hell. Well, that's the God of the Bible. That's the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can, after the body is destroyed, determine the destiny of the soul. So how then can you call someone extreme on it when they're saying just simply this, let the baby live? This is just one of the examples of what's going on in our world today. Women, the very ones who claim to be pro women and say that we got to protect our women and stuff like that. Now our women are being subjected to having to uh, play sports and compete with men. And there are legislators who are defending men in women's sports. And the particular passage I just quoted to you uh, from is uh, Matthew's gospel, chapter number 10, verse 26 and down. Fear not them, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be made known. And listen, what I tell you in darkness that speak in in light and what ye hear in the ear preach. Look at this. Preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them that kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both the soul and the body. And by the way, by the way, when, G when Jesus was talking about what I tell you in darkness, that speak in the light, that's an encouragement to preachers to preach the truth, to preach the truth. And even if it kills us, even if it costs you uh, popularity with the world, uh, if it doesn't, if it keeps you from getting a Grammy, if it keeps you from getting an Oscar, if you, if it keeps you from getting a attaboy from the world, then who cares? Just tell God's truth, stand on the truth, and the Lord will do the rest. And I tell you, I'm excited about God's truth. Round here, we've been running and we've been preaching and we've been going since the last time we talked. Uh, the Lord has blessed me. I've been in a, a jurisdictional tour uh, throughout uh, 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 NC3rd, 
uh, North Carolina third ecclesiastical jurisdiction. I almost said greater North Carolina. I was there with Bishop Leroy Jackson Woolard all of my saved life until eight years ago. So I'm more apt to say greater North Carolina than I am NC third. And you church of God and Christ people, you know what I'm talking about now. I'm talking about our jurisdictions and the, the different names and that kind of a thing. But listen, I'm grateful that God has watched over me. We were in a mighty service on last night. God's been moving by his spirit and I'm excited. I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do uh, to us and through us and what the Lord has to say to his people tonight. Because my friend, God is moving by his spirit. He's speaking and signs and wonders the Lord is using. And I'm saying to God, move, oh God, in me. Now, I will admit that tonight's Bible study will pose a challenge because I want to talk about something that is not talked about as much as I think that it should be. And the Lord has said to me, talk about this, put this before the people. And uh, I'm going to do it according to the scriptures. Uh, it's not a popular subject. Uh, I don't expect too many amens, but it's right. And it's Bible. And it's something that God is calling us to. And I guarantee you this, if we get this right, if we get this right, we will have a greater impact uh, in this world in these last days. So I'm running short today. I'm not going to preach to you today. I'm going to wait and save it for tonight. Uh, and so I want you to join me right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> Yeah, you guessed it. Bible study. You say to me, Wooden, what's the big deal? You, you're just talking about Bible study. Well, let me tell you something. Around here, Bible study is a big deal. It's bigger than anything else. It's bigger than having a gospel concert. And I thank God for gospel concerts. It's bigger than having a uh, you know, the multiple things now that people do in church. I'm, I'm literally amazed at the number of preachers who are actually shying away from the Bible. You know, I hear preachers saying, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to sound too preachy. You know, I, I've heard one preacher say, you know, the Lord didn't send me to preach to you. I just come to share with you tonight. I'm here to share. We're sharing tonight. Well, we're not going to be sharing. I'm going to be preaching and teaching the word of the Lord. I'm glad to be a preacher. I thank God for the call into the ministry. I make no apologies for being a sanctified, Holy Ghost filled preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe in the Bible. I believe that it is the only infallible, inerrant, written, holy word of God. I believe it. I believe that it's God's love, le love letter uh, to all mankind. And it is the book. It's the book of books. And it's the book that should guide us and lead us and affects us. And based on what's in this book, that should direct us as to which other books to read. <laughs> Why would you spend all of your time uh, reading all the romance novels and all the other stuff that has nothing to do with this book or is a contradiction to the truth of this great book? Gary, I'm going to come on off the air, but I told someone the other day, I said, you know, this book has grabbed my attention and has held it for 46 years. And every time I read it, I discover something that I had not read before. I see something that I had not seen before. And the effect that it has on my life and on my psyche, you talking about something that, that, that will help you sleep at night? 
that helps you quote, cope with all of the stuff that's going on in this world that gives you hope because Jesus is coming again, that gives you power. Oh my, I'm telling you, it's this book. So I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. I love you. Make it a wonderful day.